I have recently returned from my trip to the United States, where I attended the 2023 Joe Fest Toy and Comic Convention to support my friend Bobby Valor and the Valorverse Action Force toy line at this year's event. I also had some of the best toy pickups of my life. I'm talking super rare stuff at bargain prices, and I'm here to tell you all about it. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. My trip to the USA started just over three weeks ago with an 11 hour flight from Perth to Doha and then a 15 hour flight from Doha to Atlanta International Airport where I was met by my friend Michael French of Retroblasting. I spent a really enjoyable Memorial Day weekend just hanging out at the Retroblasting headquarters with Michael and Melinda who were truly wonderful hosts as well as being genuinely great human beings. Over that extended weekend, Michael took me to Second Chance Toys in Marietta, Georgia, where I secured my first toy pickups of the trip, which included both the largest and the smallest action figures that I purchased in America. I picked up a really nice G.I. Joe Mike Power Atomic Man and a vintage Kenner Yoda figure. This is the rarer darker green Yoda variant with the brown snake that was released during the return of the Jedi era and one of the items that was on my wants list for this year's trip. We also returned to Second Chance Toys the day before I left the States and on our second visit to the store I recorded a lot of footage so stay tuned to the end of the video to check out some of the amazing toys on display there. Our next stop that day was the nearby Cobb Antique Mall which had a really cool vintage toy section and I scored a vintage G.I. Joe Cobra Officer and a Super Mint Best Bin Han that I got for a bargain price of $24. I already had this figure in my collection but it desperately needed an upgrade and this figure fits the bill perfectly. I also had an absolute blast participating in a traditional style retro blasting live stream on the Sunday. It was a ton of fun sharing the screen with Michael and Melinda that day, and in case you haven't already seen it, you'll find a link to that show in the video description below. On Wednesday, I then made the much shorter journey from Atlanta to Rhode Island, where I was met by Bobby Valor, who took me straight to the Valorverse headquarters. This is where I first saw the incredible vintage carded Desert Rat figure in person and both Bobby and Chris Smith of Stan Solo Creations really knocked it out of the park with this figure. For those of you who are unable to attend Joe Fest and you feel as though you missed out on the opportunity to pick up one of these vintage carded Desert Rat figures, do not worry. There are still plenty of them available and they'll be up on the Valiverse website sometime in the near future. Bobby also gifted me an amazing unpainted test shot of the figure and I'd like to send my sincere thanks to both him and Chris Smith for allowing me to add this incredible piece to my Action Force Desert Rat collection. Over the next few days I spent hours and hours personally signing every single Desert Rat card back ready for the convention, while also taking a break to film a video about the new exclusive Warpath Eclipse, which is now my front runner for the best action figure of 2023. I got to enjoy my first experience playing with the awesome new Desert Troopers from the Valiverse Action Force toy line, as well as the Mailaway exclusive Covert Condor. I find this to be a really fun variant figure, and Covert Condor is exactly what a Mailaway exclusive should be, much in the same way that Hooded Cobra Commander was a variant of the original figure. Covert Condor also reminds me of... On the Saturday night, me, Bobby and Laser Pants hosted a special episode of the 3POA podcast, and the highlight for me was Bobby's attempt at the Vegemite Challenge. It's oh. really salty. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that. Now let's get to Joe Fest itself, a.k.a. Valicon. And the first highlight of my trip was getting to meet Articulated Ninja in person. I also want to give a massive shout out to Erica and Jasmine. You ladies were lovely and it was a real pleasure meeting you. For those of you who don't know, these are the girls behind the Find My Figures Instagram account, and you'll find a link to their page in the description below. On the Friday morning of Joe Fest weekend, we started setting up the Valiverse booth, which was twice the size of the booth that we had last year. I began wheeling in boxes and boxes of Action Force product, while Bobby got things set up just the way he wanted them. During one of my many trips back to the Valiverse trailer to bring more stuff in, I walked past a vendor's booth and saw an item that I just could not pass by. And this was the first epic toy pickup of the weekend. I got this mint and complete whip action Warhawk figure, which is from the very rare second series of the Rambo toy line. The vendor wanted $75 for the figure, so I pulled $80 out of my wallet, and when he said he didn't have any change, I told him that I didn't care, and that I was happy to pay him 80 bucks for this figure. I was absolutely buzzing to find such a rare figure at such a great price. Although the only problem I've got now is that I feel the urge to go out 
and collect all of the other really rare Series 2 Rambo figures, and that's going to be expensive and challenging. One of my jobs at the Valiverse booth was to set up the acrylic cases that would house the Vanguard models and the Action Force diorama, but I had to wait until Articulated Ninja and Laser Pants finished setting things up. So around midday I took a short walk around the convention centre floor to check out some of the other vendor booths before the show opened to the general public at 5pm. And this is when I stumbled across one of the most epic toy finds of my entire life. Just one aisle over from the Valiverse booth, I came across a vendor selling over 30 carded vintage Palatoy Action Force figures, and my jaw hit the floor when he told me he wanted $75 each for them. Before he'd even had a chance to finish speaking, I grabbed the Series 1 Orange Frogman, as this was the first Action Force figure I ever owned in childhood. I then grabbed nice carded examples of the British Marine and the German Stormtrooper, both of which are also from Series 1 released in 1982. I have mentioned in previous videos that the vintage carded Desert Rat is the second rarest Action Force figure in existence, with the only figure rarer than this being the carded Australian Jungle Fighter. So try to imagine for a moment just how excited I got when I found that very figure on this table and the guy only wanted $75 for it. I snapped it up as fast as I could, paid the vendor and rushed back to the Valiverse booth to show Bobby what I had found. I was buzzing with excitement and Bobby and everyone else at the booth could tell that something was up before I even had a chance to say anything. I walked back over to the vendor's booth with Bobby and he struck a deal with the guy to buy his entire remaining stock of carded Action Force figures, which totaled over 30 pieces, including a few of the very rare larger deluxe cards. The acquisition of these figures has expanded my Series 1 carded collection to a total of 6, and I'm now feeling the urge to complete the rest of the 1982 carded collection. This is easily one of the best toy finds of my life. Four very rare carded figures at such a bargain price. It's the stuff that toy collector dreams are made of, and something I doubt will happen again for a very, very long time. After all of that midday excitement, I started to brace myself for the opening of the convention, with doors open to the general public at 5pm. As soon as the doors opened, the Valiverse booth was swamped, and we had a line stretching back so far that I could barely see the end of it. I helped serve customers, I met many amazing fans, and I tried as best as I could to just soak up the entire experience. The Saturday morning was also busy at the booth, but nothing quite compared to that initial rush that we got on the Friday night, with all of the eager Action Force fans desperate to get their hands on Warpath Eclipse. Around mid-morning I took a break from the booth and had another walk around the floor, and this time I came back with a couple of vintage G.I. Joe Cobra figures, and a nice complete Mego Conan figure from the World's Greatest Superheroes line. I've wanted to add this figure to my Mego collection for a very long time, but I must admit that it was not something that I was expecting to find at Joe Fest. When I returned to the Valiverse booth, Michael French was talking to Jeremy Kerr, who gifted him a piece of the rubber tank treads from the screen new stunt tank seen in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. This stunt tank is the one they use when Indy almost gets his face ripped off by the tank treads, and the one that gives Henry Jones Sr. a back massage. I was watching on in awe during this exchange between two dedicated Indiana Jones fans, when suddenly Jeremy turned to me and said that he had something for me as well, and then he pulled out this Final Faction box. I wasn't sure what to make of it at first, but then I opened the box to discover that Jeremy had also gifted me a piece of the Last Crusade tank. I was stunned, and while I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around it all, I do want to send my sincere thanks to Jeremy Kerr for gifting me this amazing piece. Shortly after this happened, I was surprised yet again when my good mate Drew G said that he had a gift for me as well. Drew knew that one of the items on my wants list for this year's trip to the USA was a complete Dagobah playset, and while I had been walking around the show on the Friday, I'd found three different vendors that had Dagobah playsets, but none of them were complete. They were all missing the R2-D2 adapter that you use to make him levitate. Well then Drew gave me a beautiful boxed and complete Kenner Star Wars Dagobah playset, and I was almost lost for words. I was reluctant to bring this item home in my suitcase, so I decided to have it shipped back to Australia, which is why I don't have the actual toy to show you right now in this video. Drew, you absolutely blew me away with your generosity, and I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. While meeting friends both old and new was my number one highlight of the convention, running a very close second was attending the Valiverse panel. I'm not going to go over all the reveals here as you're much better off simply watching the panel on the Valiverse YouTube channel. But with that said, 
I would like to try and explain how the energy felt in that room. One, two, three. It's That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the panel was practically standing room only and everyone was buzzing to see the new reveals and get the lowdown on the price of the first Valiverse Action Force vehicle, the Vanguard. As I was watching Bobby deliver this part of the presentation, I felt like I was watching an emerging world-class athlete making a stamp on his sport. So this will be the range that you will get for the Vanguard. We're not here just to take part, we're here to take over. <laughs> then Bobby started to discuss the price adjustment and now we're watching a world champion deliver his seminal performance. We're gonna go down instead. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the f he wants. With this panel, Bobby Valor has shaken the tree of the big dogs in the toy industry and has truly changed the game. And I couldn't be prouder of him. Shortly after the panel, x 87 was interviewing Bobby Valor for his YouTube channel. And I was able to photobomb the video without either of them knowing. Yet my cameo aside, it is a really good interview, and if you haven't already checked it out, then you'll also find a link to that video in the description below. The Sunday morning of Joe Fest always dies down a little, as some of the attendees start making their way back home. And with the booth being a little less busy, Bobby and I took the opportunity to do some more toy shopping. I picked up another nice complete Big Ben to add to my ever-growing focus collection, and acquiring Big Bens has now become somewhat of a tradition for me at Joe Fest. Bobby also gifted me a gorgeous Mego thing from the World's Greatest Superheroes line, as he had seen how interested I was in it when we were walking around the show. I was then approached by a supporter of the channel named Trent, who was a really awesome guy, and he gave me a gorgeous heavy metal figure complete with file card to go with my Mauler tank. And as impressed as I was with this figure, what really blew me away was the Gaiden that he'd had made for me. This features the same badge that I wore on my sleeve in Iraq in the late 2000s, and it's the perfect accessory to go with my vintage style Desert Rad figure. Shortly after midday that day, I had to say my goodbyes to the Valiverse crew and start making my way back to Retro Blasting headquarters. This was a genuinely sad moment because Bobby and Ryan have become like brothers to me, and while I don't know when I'll see them again in person, I guarantee you that this trip will not be the last time. Love you guys. When I returned to Retro Blasting, my good buddy and one of the co-hosts of War Stories, Master Sun 42, gave me this amazing acrylic Action Man display sign, which I'm going to place on top of my Action Man cabinets as soon as I've finished filming this video. On my last full day in Georgia, Michael and I made our return visit to Second Chance Toys, and this time we were accompanied by Matt Swafford, Scuba Pete, and Master Sun 42. Oh hi, I'm Michael French. You may remember me from such things as uh, fighting with people on the internet and toys. <laughs> we're at Second Chance Toys today and uh, we're just uh, looking for some amazing things that don't include me. So please point the camera at amazing things because I'm not amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the store has a massive variety of high quality vintage toys with entire cases dedicated to both Star Wars and to G.I. Joe. Army building. Wow, They have some really rare tin toys, lots of vintage superheroes, and I was very tempted to buy Faces Corvette from the A-Team line, but I just couldn't figure out how to safely get it back to Australia. I did, however, make my last purchases of the trip there, and they included a very nice large head Han Solo, an Imperial Biker Scout, and a Rebel Commando, along with the first issue General Warhawk from the Coleco Rambo line, and I have used this to upgrade the current one that I have in my collection. Anyway, so look at that. Yeah. Uh, even when you get one of these for free, like I did, you still end up putting $1,200 worth of work into it to get it to this level. So um, in order to get this price, um, yeah, it's got to look this good. Um, I hope mine actually does when I finally open it up and do that late review that I drag my feet about. I ended the trip by participating in another really fun live stream on the Retro Blasting YouTube channel before starting the long journey back home to Australia. As much as I love seeing all the awesome toys at Joe Fest and gathering my haul of loot, what really makes these conventions so special is the amazing people. The entire weekend was filled with great times and incredible experiences, 
and every single person that I met was an absolute pleasure to interact with. I want to thank each and every one of you for being such wonderful people. And I'd also like to send a special thank you to Michael and Melinda for being such amazing hosts while I was in Georgia. And of course, to Bobby Valor, because without him, I never would have even embarked on this trip in the first place. Bobby, seeing what you've managed to achieve through hard work, talent and dedication makes me super proud of you, man. And I can't wait to see the inevitable growth of the Valorverse company over the next few years. You are changing the game in the best way possible and nothing can stop you. I can't wait to see you again, man. And the first round of Vegemite shots are on me. Mm -hmm.